I'm Pete with Avitas Payroll. I'm going to share a little bit about me, but also a little bit about this whole AB5 rule, which I've been talking about incessantly for the last couple of weeks. I know it's very exciting to understand how payroll and HR law happen, but it is critical to know in your business. So, um, first slide, thank you. Are we good to go, yeah. Doug? Okay. Um, so, about me, I've been with Avitas for about three years. Um, I came from the East Coast originally, from Washington, D.C. My parents are from North Carolina. And um, if anyone says anything about Duke, we can have a one-to-one -one and hash that out. But I went to school at UNC Chapel Hill, so I will slightly judge you. <laughs> Big basketball fan here. Um, but anyway, prior to working with Avitas, I did management consulting for about 10 years um, with a couple different companies, including my last stint at Deloitte. So I did a lot of work with big businesses, big companies, HP, Coca-Cola, Department of Defense, things like that. So that's kind of a unique thing I bring to one-on-one -on -one conversations as well as the clients, is I understand how business can be built and scaled over time. And I try and bring Avitas' solutions to that. Um, prior to that, I worked in the Middle East um, with the Department of Defense and a couple other people doing um, consulting work with local tribal leaders. So I understand how conflicts work. So working with business owners has been a nice adjustment since then. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to talk about today is this new law. <clears throat> Avitas itself, before I dive into that, we've been around for 25 years. We work in all 50 states, which is a great advantage to you or your contacts because if you set up in California and you want to open or hire somebody in another state, we can do that easily. We actually have physical offices in 14 different cities, three of which in California. So I'm in the East Bay in San Ramon. We also have one in San Diego. We also have one in um, LA. Um, we actually have compliance support as well, which is more than just your traditional payroll, uh, which is nice. A lot of our competitors just offer a software and a payment processing system. We can actually help you with compliance as well. It's a little unique there. Most companies that grow with us grow 12% faster than their competitors and have a 14% lower turnover on their staff. Um, uh, for startups that work with us, most people try and gut it out, do it on their own. But people that work with us from day one and set up their systems properly have a 50% higher success rate. So just some fun facts there. <clears throat> now diving into AB5. I've talked about this a lot, so I'll give you an overview. This is kind of an infographic, and I do have some handouts on the table as well, which you can take home with you on AB5. So essentially, this is a rule that the California legislature has been trying to get passed for many years. Initially, it started out as the gig economy rule, really something targeting Uber and Lyft, these big companies that operate all over the country, have a big presence in California. They have 1099 employees, independent contractors. You know, a person downloads the app, they pass Uber's background check, they start driving. Well, that's great for most of us. I use Uber all the time. But it does create problems both for the state of California and for the actual employee or the independent contractor. They're not covered by workers' comp insurance. They're not protected if they have an accident on, on the job. And there's a lot of payroll taxes that California is not collecting. So as you can imagine, California's been trying to figure this out for a while. And in September, the governor, Governor, governor Newsom, wrote this law, passed it, signed it, and it's going to affect in January 1st, 2020. So only had about three months to figure out your business plans if you have 1099s. Um, what it does, is it attaches these new labor law rules to businesses that have previously had 1099s. So now you have to pay payroll taxes if someone's now a W-2, an employee. You have to pay workers' compensation insurance. You have to pay overtime, double time, break time, all these different California things um, that are unique to our state and the payroll law. Some, some cases you may have to pay benefits to your employees depending on the size of your business, how many employees you have. There's also the minimum wage piece and also parental leave and California sick time. There's kind of a lot of things that are coming down the pike. Now what's at stake is for most businesses that have never used W-2 labor or an employee labor, you'll have to add all these things to your payroll, which will give you a 30% bump in operational costs. That's like workers' comp, taxes, et cetera. Um, it'll be about $7 billion-ish in new uh, revenue for the state of California, so they're excited about that. Um, the unique thing about it, too, is most of the California enforcing agencies that go into a business, ask questions, the EDD, groups like that, a lot of these groups can now, um, whatever taxes they find that a business has not been paying, they, and they collect, it goes straight to those agencies' budgets, not the California General Fund. 
So as you can imagine, a lot of these agencies are very eager to get more money into their agency. So they, they're highly incentivized to look into this. Um, and of course, there's a risk the entire gig economy bill. If Uber has a 30% bump, they have 16,000 drivers. They're already running at a loss, um, kind of a big deal. So how does it work? Um, there is a three-part test, OK? There's A, you have to be free from your company's control. Uber fails that test, right? They tell you where to go using their app, when to pick up passengers, all that kind of stuff. B, you have to do work that's not central to the business. So Uber drivers drive, Uber, drive cars. Uber is a ride-sharing company. So if you follow that line of thought, they should be employees. It's different, say, you know, you're a business owner, you hire a web designer like Sandeepa. You do catering. Totally different, probably fine in that kind of scenario. The third thing is the, uh, the 1099 has to have an independent business um, that's registered. So if you hire um, a lawyer and a lawyer has their own business set up, totally fine. If you hire someone off the street, like a guy from you know, Home Depot doing house projects, they don't, probably don't have their own business set up. So you probably need to be paying them as a W-2. Um, and the interesting thing about this is all three parts have to be checked off. If you miss one of these, then you're automatically classified as a W-2. So it's a very complex, wide, wide rule here. Uh, who's in or out? It's very confusing. There's about 50 carve-outs um, across the industries. Um, and if you fail to qualify, there's still some additional regulations and rules you have to check off before you can hit the 1099 rule. So these people are at high risk. Most likely, they're going to get crushed by this new rule. They're going to pay that 30% bump. Long-range truckers, people that have to drive the big semis, you know, they have 10, 20 drivers. They're not paying workers' comp insurance. They're not paying payroll taxes on those guys. They're going to get hit. <clears throat> a lot of salons, day spas, and hairdressers are But if, you're hire, if you have a hairdresser who's a 1099 in your salon or, or a massage therapist or someone like that, and you're controlling them, you're collecting money, you're scheduling them, probably a W-2. There's also um, office sharing chiropractors. I talked to a chiropractor actually just yesterday who was working with a partner. The partner was, was letting them use their POS, their scheduling system. And they actually just left that office and set up their own office because they don't want to be considered a W-2. They want to be considered a business owner. So a lot of things there. <clears throat> now the exemptions. There's a lot of exemptions, especially people that do contracting in the um, construction industry, attorneys, accountants, graphic designers. There's a whole list here. Um, you have to pass the Barolo test to be fully exempted. So that's another layer of compliance. So. What you want to do to get ahead of the head of this rule is find a partner that can help you navigate this. They'll pay people appropriately and avoid any big taxes. If you want more, schedule a one-on-one. Thank you so much.